Honourable and respected brothers and elders, one of the most fundamental things of our faith is the thing which we refer to as the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the bunyad of our faith. We refer to it in Arabic as Tawheed. Tawheed is believing in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what that basically means is it doesn't mean we just alone only believe Allah is one, but there's loads of other things in addition to that as well. For example, when we say the word Allah is the provider, we, he is one of his qualities, one of his names is Ar-Razzaq. One of his qualities is, for example, now Al-Ghaffar. If you know, there's a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions, لِلَّهِ تِسْعَةُ وَتِسْعُونَ أَسْمَاءَ إِسْمًا مَنْ أَحْصَاهَا دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ There are 99 names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and whoever memorizes them, أَحْصَاهَا, memorizes them, imbibes them, practice them, دَخَلَ الْجَنَّةِ This individual will go to paradise and Jannah. Allah Ta'ala then talks about these qualities in different maqamat, different places. In the Quran Kareem, Allah Ta'ala mentions, هُوَ اللَّهُ الَّذِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُ That is that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, there is no one worthy of worship إِلَّا هُ except Him. He is what? عَالِمُ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَ He is all knowledgeable of that which is hidden, that which is apparent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes on to further mention that he is what? Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Salam, Al-Mu'min, Al-Muhaymin, and so on. Wal-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, Al-Mutakabbir. And some of these qualities are mentioned. Point of mentioning is this. Allah ta'ala, throughout the Quran, has referred to himself with different names and qualities. Each one has a specific meaning, a matlab, a maqsad. In regards to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also has certain qualities. So he is Ra'uf and Rahim, for example. He is also, for example, Khatamun Nabiyin. He is also Mahi. He is also Al-Hadi. He is also Al-Rashid and so on. Al-Hadi, I beg your pardon. So similarly, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has all these different qualities and each one represents something. My point of discussing this is what? Our fundamental basis of Islam is the thing of Tawheed and oneness of Allah wa ta'ala. Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhu, he was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, Kuntu khalf al sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was with he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We, I was sitting behind him, a conveyance. He, they were traveling together. And then he said to me, Ya ghulam, inni u'allimuka kalimat. Young boy, I'm going to teach you a few words. I'm going to teach you something. So what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam do? He mentioned to him first, Ihfadillaha yahfadk, ihfadillaha tajidhu tujahik. Number one, two, two things I mentioned here. If you protect the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he's addressing a small boy, maybe the age of 10. If you protect the deen of Allah, oh boy, listen, if you protect the deen of Allah, Allah will protect you. And if you protect and uphold the deen of Allah, you will find Allah assist you in all of your affairs. The, sim the word translation of this is, you'll see Allah in front of you everywhere. What that basically means, Allah will assist you in all of your affairs. That's if you uphold the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how he ought to be obeyed. He goes on to mention two more sifat or two more nasihas, two more bits of advice where he says further, he says that, وَعْلَمْ لَوْ أَنَّ الْأُمَّ لَوْ اجْتَمَعَتْ عَلَىٰ أَنْ يَنْفَعُوكَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَنْفَعُوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ if the whole of the Ummah were to get together and they want to benefit you with something, they want to give you something, they want to benefit with you something, they cannot benefit you with anything except and unless Allah had already destined it for you. And if they were together, to give you harm, if they were all together, the Ummah were together to give you some harm. لَمْ يَضُرُّوكَ إِلَّا بِشَيْءٍ قَدْ كَتَبَهُ اللَّهُ لَكَ They can never ever, ever give you any nuksan, any difficulty, any dharar and harm can never come your way except for that thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already ordained for you. Now who is he teaching this to? A young 10 year old boy, a young kid. Some of us think some things are too out of depth for children. Okay, now they're still small, but they're still small. But from the word go, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is instilling tawheed within this child's heart. And 
to understand that the things of deen are important. If you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist you, you want Allah ta'ala to help you, then you need to uphold the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's teaching him tawheed. If you want to ask something, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا اسْتَعِنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ if you want help and you want Nusra, you want Mu'awana, you want Allah to help you, fasta'in billah. Only ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why is he teaching a young boy this? Because he wants to instill within his heart that thing that only Allah can do, no one else can do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has control over everything. These are the conversations we need to bring alive in our families as well. Similar. We have children, we sit down. Compare this one side and I'll give you, you can think for this yourself. Ask yourself this question. How many times have we had the conversation of dunya within our home? You're going to become a lawyer. We give that, right? Now ask yourself, mashallah, maybe you people have given dars of Bukhari to your kids. But suppose you haven't. Compare one side, all the dunya we talk we've given. Mashallah, you need a house, you need money, you need qualification, you need a degree, you need. Compare that. And how much Islam we've said to our family? How much Tawheed have we told our family? How much have we spoke about the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How much have we spoken about Allah ta'ala and his sifat? This concept of Allah is Raziq for example, Razzaq. That Allah provides for all. When someone goes through a financial difficulty, ask yourself a question, where is the first thing our mind goes to? Sometimes it goes towards fellow businessmen, relatives who have other businesses. Allah forbid, sometimes it goes to the bank manager. I need to go and take a loan. Where's the yaqeen in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where was it that our heart immediately turned to Allah? We go to Allah first and then we go towards the asbab. Then we go towards the means. But when, we have a, when something hits the fan, where do we go to first? Immediately we go to asbab straight away. Where's the iman in Allah? Where's the yaqeen in Allah? Where's the ta'aluk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Musa alayhi salam was once walking, Allah ta'ala wanted to teach him. Allah ta'ala taught all anbiya and the reason why these things are related to us, so we can learn sabaq and lesson as well. By la ilaha illallah means what? There is no ilah, there is no dua, there is no giver, there is no taker, there is no provider, there is no governor, there is nothing except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one thing of Islam is tawheed and the oneness of Allah ta'ala. If we don't have this full yaqeen on Allah, our iman is naqis. That means no one can possess godly like qualities. The, the job is a sabab. Haqiqi razik is Allah. The job is a means. Allah is the one who provides. The doctor is a means. Allah gives shifa. All these things, we have to remind ourselves again and again. Remind ourselves again and again. It's not happening from here. Allah say all right. It's happening through the amr and the will and the qudrat and the irada of one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did Allah talk about this in the Quran? Why? For this very reason, so we bring these yeah, things in our heart. Like enough source, we listen to YouTube more than we read Quran. We read the, the sun and the daily jung and all these, then more than we read the Quran. So how are we ever going to know what's in the book of Allah if we've never opened it? And by the, I say like this because because a lot of the solution to our problems if we just open the book of Allah and learn and read and take some shock. Allahu Akbar, so many jawabat and answers are in this glorious book which we have turned away from, but we've turned our backs on. So Musa alayhi salam was once walking and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awha ila Musa. He sent wahi to Musa alayhi salam. So Musa alayhi salam was walking and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Oh Musa, you see this rock? You see this stone, I want you to hit it. So he had an asa. Long story, Musa alayhi with the asa. Maybe another bayan inshallah. He hits the rock. Now, within rocks, you have layers of rocks sometimes. So you break away a rock, there's another layer, another layer. So he hits the rock and out comes another rock. Allah says, hit it again. So he didn't question, he hits it a second time. Allah sends wahi again, hit it a third time. He hits it a third time. Now this is what Musa alayhi sees. And subhanallah, it's, the most ama- it's one of the most amazing things which he sees. From the little rock, one small kira and insect comes out. And in its mouth, it's got a small bit of leaf or grass. Allah Ta'ala says, Wahi to Musa, take your ear closer. Listen to what he's saying. Listen to what it's saying. So Musa Alayhi goes near. And what is... Allah Ta'ala opened up the parda and he understood what was this insect, this kira, this insignificant makhluk of Allah saying. Subhana man yarani, ya'rifu makani, 
یارزقونی ولا یانسانی با ایف یو انڈرسٹینڈ آر بیکیز بیا اون پھٹی تروٹی انگلیش کے جسٹیفیکیشن یار با اینی وی سبحان من یارانی گلوری بی تو دا اللہ سبحان و تعالی who's watching me who's looking at me who's paying attention to me يَعْرِفُ مَكَانِي He knows of my situation. He knows of my difficulty. He knows of my, my, my situation. يَرْزُقُنِي Despite that, He provides sustenance and rizq for me. وَلَا يَنْسَانِي And being where He is, being the Arab of the whole world, He never forgot me and never forsaken me. Small kira yar, small insect. وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا there's no any creation on the face of this earth that the responsibility for rizq does not fall on the shoulders of Allah. He's taken full zimidari, full responsibility. We have to go towards asbab and means because it's there. But Allah can provide to who He wants, when He wants, how He wants, in whichever way He wants. And Allah is not in need of asbab. Why did Allah Ta'ala talk about the qissa of Adam alayhi salam being born? Because that was a miracle. Allah created him from without a father, from without a mother, there you go, I've created. And then he showed he can create a man, a woman from a man, a human from a human, one man. So he created Hawa alayhi salam. And then he showed from a mother, I can create a child without the need of a father. He created Isa alayhi salam. And in Santohe, mother and father. So why are all these there? Because he wanted to tell us, instruct us, get the call. Wait, Jab Aap se dekhle, where you're seeing, it's not happening from there. It's happening through the irada and the will and the qudrat of one Allah. These tazakira, these reminders what we should talk about with our families as well. In addition to all the dunyavi stuff, by me, I don't care living, going back and living in Chittagong or so on and be broke. I didn't say that. I'm saying, ye be karo. With all that, do that as well. Okay, but ye be thora saat saat ho na. Okay, but they could explain to our children. We're living in a mahal that needs this. What happens is slowly, 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 the tawheed of that child becomes weak and they start losing their faith. Now, it's not something that you can tattoo on your forehead. So for, if you don't pray salah, you can see by someone's not praying namaz. Someone's not fasting, you can see by he's not keeping roza, he's eating. If someone is not going hajj, you can see by he hasn't gone to hajj. But how do you know when a person's got garbar in their iman? How do you know? You can't tell. They're not going to put it anywhere. There's no medallion or, or ring or something someone's going to wear. You can't tell. And if we don't start the conversations at home, then what happens is slowly, 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 our children and families start going towards kufr. I'm saying, brother, you are in this place. Everyone understands the word, right? Yeah? Brother, you are in this place. This is not a mistake. Alhamdulillah, we've come here, mashallah. For me, this is home. Look, bro, I'm straight up. I'm half, I'm, I'm half other Goron, yaar. I'm half English. I'm not going nowhere. But a lot of people come, right, in the UK with this mindset, I need to earn money. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. Alhamdulillah, good. Ahlan wa sahlan. But the problem is this. If we're just focusing just on that and we neglect our children, oh, oh. Then there's big khasara. Because then, who are we doing all this tagador for? Who are we doing it for? We're doing it for this family, right? But they need time. They don't always need money. They need time as well. So we need to take time out. As your family and your business is important, your family is also important as well. For some of you who have children, think of this. Those of you who don't, you don't have dependents, then cholo tiga, you're, you're a bit more at ease. But perhaps you have family abroad. Still, the conversation should be there. But are you studying? Have you been doing your work? Are you reading Quran? Are you reading Salah? Are you doing khidmat of the mother? Are you doing khidmat of grandma and grandfather? For example, whichever way, but there's some deeny conversation. Taki, when the children can seek it, ah, deen is also important as well. When we go with children, car was the perfect time. Where are they going to run? They can't do nothing. It was a good opportunity to have a conversation about deen. Allah maaf my one father goes, uh, he was putting on Bollywood music. Taki culture, taki apna culture yaad rahe. But what, what logic is that? You're putting on music so they can remember of their culture. By the culture will not take them to Jannah. Tawheed, Risalat, belief in Allah will take them to Jannah, not culture. So you see, we've got to sort our priorities out a little bit. Because knowing, for example, now about Nasib Allah and this and that, but, but it's not going to help anybody. You need to know about Allah, Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The number one bunyadi usul is Tawheed. And it's something we don't talk about. It just seems, Yaar ke on? It seems, Allah ma'afan wa'ayin, what is it? The more we talk about, Ke bekhar bitha, look, when you're ill, there's two ways how you can do this. A child, two children are ill, for example, or mother is ill, or anyone, just two pictures of people in your house. One child ill, and now before you go to the doctor, you say to the other children, but hey, look, pray two rakats, aap sab Allah se mango, all of you make dua to Allah, ke Allah, please give our brother shifa. Please give our sister shifa. Please give mum shifa, granddad shifa, whoever it may be. 
Then we'll go to the asbab. Then we'll give her a spoon of honey and some black seed and go to the doctors and make an appointment. And if need be, have whatever goliath there is. Whenever someone's ill in the house, first thing, do paracetamol di goliath. Two paracetamol straight away. I don't know about Bengali culture, Pakistanis are known for this. Someone's drowning in the cool, they'll chuck him two paracetamol. Okay, there, Golian. Someone's juti broken, have two paracetamol. It's just, I know it's overhyped, but that's how ridiculous it is. Any musiba, but do Golian, do Golian. Have two tablets. Tike, go to the do'a Golian, go to the two paracetamol, go to whatever it is. I'm not a doctor, so don't take this as advice or whatever. I'm just saying. Come say, come go to Allah first. Ya Allah, I've got this problem, please help me. I mean, it takes one minute, 30 seconds, 15 seconds. At least we've turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that there's something that's done before we go to... Because if haqiqi raziq is Allah, why are we going elsewhere? That means when we don't go to Allah, iman is not there. It's zubani kharj. Allah hai, Allah hai. But when the business goes bankrupt, you phone up your bank manager and say, I need an appointment. I need to discuss finances. We're in a problem here. Bank is not for our, the, the business shortfall is long till we can see now how problems are coming. Where are we turning to Allah in all of this? So you see, this is why I say the more we talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we do it, the more it will become a part of our everyday life. So inshallah, we should start with ourselves, start with our families, and inshallah, you will see a massive difference inshallah. Try it. I'm not coming here just for fun. You know, I'm standing here, this is a big amana. I have to think, yeah, what am I going to tell the people? Because Allah is going to ask me, what did you talk about? So my job is, is when we to talk about things that yeah, I think will really benefit this community, our community of Muslims. So this is what I feel in UK is a big problem. Because of the, that connection, parents with children not there, they don't know anything about Islam. They don't know, all we know is that they're born in a Muslim home. But their belief system is so watered down. May Allah give us hifaza, may Allah protect us. And may Allah give us istiqamat and strength, inshallah. There's a lot of good, but there's some things which we need to fix up. This is definitely one of them. Time has gone over, so we will stop here. Allah give us tawfiqs.